Can you hear that? The dinosaurs are at work in my back alley. <laughs> it's actually a road crew working on my street or just the side street. So my apologies if that background noise becomes too much. Today I'm thinking about balance, <clears throat> solitude, and it starts with um, one of the precepts in, in John Wineland's 11 precepts for the conscious warrior. And I won't get into my stuff about the warrior right now. I'm just going to say that, so the precept is that the conscious warrior cultivates solitude as well as the company of conscious men. Both of those things are hard things to do, especially when we're in our younger years. For one thing, many of us have been groomed to rely on other people. It's hard to be alone in this culture for lots of reasons. And the other thing is it's hard to find the company of conscious men. And when you do find them, it's important to remember that solitude is still really important and that these things change. So now I'm going to segue into a little conversation about tango. One of the things I love about social dance is how it if, if you practice any social dance, really, for any length of time, you start to realize that you're communicating at a level that most of the time in your life you're not. You're not talking to each other, or rarely. You're communicating through touch. You're reading of each other's bodies. And if you practice any of the social dances for any length of time, and particularly tango, which is completely improvised, you start to, your body gets incredibly sensitive. Now in tango, there's, and in the other social dances, there's a, a premium placed on being in your own balance. Similarly, in our culture, there's a premium on being independent. The difference is that in social dance, and again, particularly in tango, the art, the, the beauty of the dance comes in those moments when you move out of balance. And then in that moment, you're actually wanting to feel the others, the weight of their body in some sm small or large way, depending on how you dance. But their imbalance compensates for your imbalance, or my imbalance. And how we figure that out, without thinking about it, we just feel our way through it. That's the art. And so I think it's the same with us outside of dance. And especially if we're not always depending on words. If we're feeling into each other from a place of our own, our own balance, our own independence, but trusting that it's okay to lose the balance, to lose the independence, and that the other will give us what we need. Now, that's a huge risk. And in social dance, and in tango again particularly, we're taking that risk all the time, and we're learning that for most of us, it's worth taking the risk. It's not always the case. And we can always step back into our solitude and, and that place of balance, that place of independence. But the magic happens when we lose the balance and we allow the other to help us. And I think it's the same in, in our relationships, whether it's a friendship or romantic relationship, a work relationship. 
it's important to have some sense of autonomy and independence and to be able to move into solitude to nurture myself but the real magic happens when I step into connection when I take the risk and when it comes down to seeking that company of, for us as men masculine identified men who really are not taught these things the company of conscious men is is very important and it will change and changing falling in and out of love with each other as as men who support each other is just the nature of the dance so cultivate solitude and cultivate the falling in and out of love and just trust that love like balance persists thank you